Time to hear the words of the Lord. We got two minutes of y'all's time. All right. Yes, ma'am. We love for you too. I would, I I don't want to I don't want to have to scream. I feel like the, the conversation is more personable if it's you know a, a normal conversation with the normal distance. Right. I promise you, I promise you, your time is not wasted. I promise your time won't be wasted. I might show you something you've never, ever heard of or thought about through the Most High God, right? Do you believe in God? Do you believe in the Bible? Which only makes sense, right? Because the only way we know about God, do you believe in Jesus? Yeah. Who they call Jesus, right? So the only way we know about God and Jesus is if we read the Bible. So you got, by default, we believe the Bible, right? Yeah. All right. So according to the Bible, what does the Bible call us? What, what, what would be our nationality according to the Bible? I right? That's a hard question, right? It's a hard question. Especially if, like we don't read our Bible like that, it would be a hard question. Yeah, I don't read mine like that. Right? And that's honesty, you know. The Bible tells us to confess our faults one to another. You just said you don't read your Bible like that. Well, you know, hopefully after today you will, right? Um, you got a precept? All right, bring your precept out. This is the book of John, chapter 4 and verse 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Right? So spirit and in truth means we got to be spiritual beings and truth being reality. We also have to do stuff in real life, right, to give honor to him. One of those things would be meditating on his precepts or a.k.a. reading the Bible, right? So I'm going to show you some things in the Bible you probably never even heard or thought to think about. Because, like, you... We don't, if we don't read the Bible, we don't know who, who God calls us. Because he don't call us African-American, right? We put that on our, our, our paperwork when we apply to jobs. He don't call us black. That's not in the Bible, right? So what does he call us? Can you take a look at this sign right here? Huh? His children. Ooh, that's a key word right there. He do, he do, but take a look at this sign real quick. Right? Right here is what... We call ourselves or what we've been labeled, and so we just call ourselves that. And right here are the nationalities according to the Bible, right? The tribe that we're on. These are the children of Israel. You ever heard that before? Like when Moses was in uh, Egypt and he was telling uh, Pharaoh, let my people go. He was talking about the Israelites, the children of Israel, right? So would you call yourself an American black? What would you call yourself? Do you see yourself on the sign somewhere? I would say, give me American black. It took you a minute to answer that. You must be mixed with something or something. All right, American black, right? So right here it says the tribe of Judah. Have you ever heard of something called the tribe of Judah? I know Fantasia, she, she did a video saying Look, people, we're really the 12 tribes of Judah. She said that, right? She meant 12 tribes of Israel. But, you know, Judah is an important tribe. Some history, they used to be the kingship. That was the king tribe of all the children, of all the tribes of the children of Israel, like you said, the children of God. That was the king tribe. So we have out of that, we have Christ. We have King Solomon, King David. David was the one that slayed Goliath, right? And guess what? They was the tribe of Judah. That means they look like who? They look like us. Right. So give me Hebrews 7 and 14. Right. Give me Revelation 1 and 14. And. Uh, yeah. Just give me those two real quick. Hebrews 7 and 14. 
This is the book of Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Who's our Lord? It will be Christ, right? He said, it's evident that our Lord what? It is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Right? So, don't believe me. That's what the Bible said. That man looked like us. So, I know you're looking at this sign like, why y'all got horns on that man? Because that don't look like me. But they say that that's our Lord and Savior. Right? So, the word devil in Hebrew means what? To deceive. A deceiver. So, we put them horns right there because that's an deception, a deceptive picture. That's not him. Right, that's the devil. That's the so-called devil that the that's Bible right. speaks of. Right? You following? All right, so give me Revelation 1 14. So give me Revelation 1 and 1 first. Read. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the revealing of what Jesus Christ looked like. Right? People don't people don't go into that enough. You go to church, and these churches don't tell you that he looked like us. Right, because they get taught by these people at these uh, theologian seminary schools, and they get taught that that's what he looked like. Or they say his color don't matter, right? But if his color don't matter, how come you can't just tell us what color he is, right? Let's read what the Book of Revelation, the revealing of Jesus Christ, says in the Bible, not my words, but the Bible. Read verse thirteen, and in the midst of seven candlesticks. One like unto the Son of Man. The seven candlesticks are the seven churches that the book of Revelation talks about. His chosen people, right? And they're different churches. And he's telling these churches what they're doing wrong and what they're doing right. Right? So, read. Clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the past with a golden girdle. Right? So, he's coming back for these seven churches, these chosen people. Right? But the, the, the people of... Of church and Christianity wants you to believe that he's coming back for everybody. That's what they say, right? He's coming back for everybody. But he's saying, I'm coming back for these seven churches. And I'm clothed with a girdle. I'm clothed with a, a, a garment with a golden girl. You know what a golden girl was for? So he couldn't get thrust through in war. So he he's coming back for war. They think he's coming back for peace. They think he's coming back to put children on his lap. You know what I'm saying? They think he's coming back to be meek and mild. But he says he's coming back for war. And this is what he looks like. Verse 14, read. His head and his hairs were white like wool. You see, you see the young king's hair right here? Wooly. That's wooly hair. Is that wooly hair? No. Right? Read. As white as snow. Right. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because he's coming back for them seven candlesticks. So that reflecting of that candle is in his eye. His chosen people. Give me Matthew 15, 24. Right? Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. If you took off your slippers, that's the same color as your face, right? So he said that his feet, because he got this long, glorious garment on, you can't see nothing but his feet. He said that his feet are like fine brass, right? Not something ashy, right? Brass kind of got a shine to it, right? Like the Africans, they don't really have a shine to their skin. But our people, when we in the sun, we got a little shine to our skin. You feel me? So he says his feet, his feet was like fine brass. But how, how dark was this brass, right? Read. As if they burned in the furnace. So he's saying that he's as black as a piece of brass burning in the furnace. You know, our people, can, we can get black now. Can this right here get black? No. Like you said, he get red. He get red and burnt. Get skin cancer. That's a, that's a lie. Right? So this is, so like I said, the, the Christian church will have you believe that he came for everybody. He, they say, whosoever believes, right? Whosoever believes on the name shall be saved. Give me Acts 2, give me Acts 2 and 21. We're going to get that too. But this is out of Christ's mouth. This is red letter. You know what happens when it's red letter in the Bible? That means Jesus is talking, right? So-called Jesus. Read. This is what he told us. This, I say so-called because we call him by a Hebrew name. That's the so-called that the, the Christianity calls him and all that. Right? So that's what we know him by. So-called. Like, we're so-called black men, but we're really Israelites. Right? Read. This is the book of Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So all the people that want to say he's sent to everybody, he's sent to the Chinese man, he's sent to the white man, he's sent to the Arab man. He said, I'm only sent to the children of Israel to redeem my people. That's right. Right? Like you said earlier, the children, God's children, right? 
There's children in you guys' car right now. But is he your child? Is, is he part of them children in that car? No. So God's children isn't everybody. He has a certain children. Right? Read this. Acts 2, verse 21. This is the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 21. Bring it out. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. There's that whosoever. There's that whosoever that the Christian church loves to say. Whosoever believes shall be saved. But who is the whosoever? If I'm a football coach and I tell my football team in my locker room, whosoever believes that we're going to win, we're going to win. I'm talking to everybody in that locker room. I'm not talking to everybody in the stadium. So who's the so, whosoever that the Bible speaks of? Keep reading. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay. So who's going to be saved? Keep reading. Ye men of Israel. No, ye men of America. Ye men of Israel. Ye men of a uh, of nation of Islam. Ye men of Israel. You men of China. Ye men of Israel. Right. So only the people on this sign are the whosoever. So I'm here to tell you today that you... All the people in the car, we're the children of Israel. We got to get back these laws, statutes, and commandments, right? Because we are the people of God. We're the children that you claim that we were when you walked up. This book is about us. This book, these people look like us. Job 30 and 30, he says, I am black, right? Songs of Solomon, written by King Solomon, he says, I'm black but comely, right? We know we black and beautiful. That's what comely mean, right? We read in Revelation 1 and 14 that he didn't look like that. He looked like us from the tribe of Judah. We're kings. It's not just a cliche no more. We're actually clean, kings and queens, and they hid that from us, right? So before I, before I let you go, I'm going to read you a couple of laws, statutes, and commandments. That's for our people, right? Give me Deuteronomy uh, 4 and 6, right? And give me uh, Leviticus 11. Give me uh, Sabbath day and Exodus 20, right? This is Deuteronomy 4 and 6. He gave, so as a special group of people, right, in his house, right, he gave us certain things as a cheat code to life. Because he loved us so much, right? Read this. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, and verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. He's talking about these law statutes and commandments, right? Read. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding. So we all look for wisdom and understanding at the at the beauty salon, at the barbershop, at the cookout, at school, right? We're looking for wisdom and knowledge everywhere but this book. He said, I'm giving you all these law statutes and commandments for your wisdom and knowledge. So keep and do them. Read. For this is your wisdom and, under, and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statues and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So if we do all these things to cheat codes to life, surely they'll say, Hey, look, we got to go to this nation of people because they're the salt of the earth. They got all the answers. Hey, there's a sickness going on. I know they know how to get rid of it. You know, our, our, our mothers, they know exactly what to give us when we're sick. Right? They know we are the people that cure the bubonic plague. They try to cover it up, but we, they asked us. We're the people that built Egypt. He said, Moses let my people go. They don't want to let us go. Why? Because we built Egypt. Why would you want to let somebody go that built you? And now, here in America, right? We built America. Right? Give me that in uh, Deuteronomy 28 and uh, 68. Read what you got. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. This is going to make us wise. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. All right? Hey, we can stop right there. You remember, you know what the Sabbath day is? The Sabbath day, Sabbath means rest, right? We're the only country that really calls Sabbath day Saturday. Right? You go to you go to the Spanish country, they're gonna say El Sabado. Right? You go to places in Africa, stuff like that, they call it the Sabbath day. Right? We know that Sunday is the first day of the week. That's why, that's why when, you, when you're talking to business people, they say business week. Because the first day of the business week is Monday, but the first day of the week is Sunday. Right? So he's saying, keep my Sabbath day. Remember it. Keep it holy. Set apart. Right? Why do you have to tell us that? Because he knew we, we, for, we would forget. So he's telling us what? Read the next one. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So you want to get your hair done? Right? You want to buy and sell? You want to... You know, uh, stock up on food, all that. Six days I'm giving you to do that. But keep reading. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Right? So he's saying, because I rested on the seventh day in Genesis, right? When he created everything, he rested on the seventh day. He said, guess what? I want you to rest. This is going to be your wisdom and knowledge 
right, in front of all the nations. They're going to see, okay, on this day, this nation of people, they take a rest so that they can endure. Because if we work ourselves every single day, we're going to be tired. So that's wisdom and understanding, right? Give me some more wisdom and understanding in the side of the nations on how we should eat, right? Read. Oh, I got someone concerned the Sabbath day. Oh, go ahead, read. This is Nehemiah chapter 10 and verse 31. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we should not buy it from them on the Sabbath day or on the holy day, right? So other nations, right? Even if they come to us and try to sell something to our nation, we're going to say, look, y'all know we don't get down like that. Just imagine, imagine if our whole nation, right, the, the so-called blacks, the so-called Native Americans, and the so-called Hispanics, right, because you've seen Mexicans sometimes, they got a buzz cut, they look just like our people. You know what I'm saying? That's our brothers. Those are our sisters, right? So imagine if our whole nation, right, said we're not buying or selling on Saturday. You know how many businesses was, would go out of, set, out of, out of, how, would go out of business? They would lose so much money because Saturday they make the most money off of our people, the so-called black people, right? We buying everything on Saturday. We going to the clubs. We doing all that on Saturday, right? But he's saying this is your wisdom in all the nations that you're not going to do nothing on that day. You're going to disrupt all the sin that's going on in the world, right? Really? Yeah, Friday night to uh, the end of Saturday, right? So read uh, this. These right here is how we should. Give me Acts 17 and 11. No, keep what you got. All right, read this. This is this is wisdom and knowledge and how we should eat because you know the, the Bible covers all bases. How we should talk, how we should eat, how we should dress, how we should walk, right? So here's what the Bible got to say about how we should eat. Read. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter eleven and verse seven. And the swine. You know what swine is? Everybody knows what swine is. It's that pepperoni, that bacon, right? That ham. Pork that chop. pork chop, Chitlins. chitlins, pork rind, you know what I'm saying? Uh, What'd she say? Yeah. That good stuff? Uh -huh. Nah, 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 nah. It's what we thought was good. Because they... It ain't good for you, and it's not good. Let's see. Let's. This is the wisdom, the wisdom from the Bible. Let's see what the Bible has to say about that good stuff. All right, read. Though he divided the hoof and is cloven-footed, Yet he cheweth not the cud. So basically, they don't digest their stuff good enough, right? And they don't have no way to ex expel their toxins because they have no pores, right? And they eat slop, so they got toxins. They can't get that stuff out of their body. They can't digest it well enough, so he says it's unclean for us. Keep reading. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and of their carcass shall ye not touch. So that good stuff, we can't even touch it. <laughs> We can't, even, we can't even eat it, we can't touch it, we shouldn't be smelling it. But this is how you know that it's bad for you. And this is how you know it's an evil world we live in because you can't go to a single place without there being bacon in it, right? You can't get gummy worms and gummy bears because they use gelatin from pork. You can't go to a fast food place because every item on the fast food place, right, has bacon in it, has pork in it. It used to just be a breakfast food, but now it's an all-day food. That's how you know we live in a wicked world because they go contrary to what the Bible speaks, right? Uh, give me uh, of the waters. You still got Acts 17, 30? All right. I got Acts 17. I got a precept. Read. Verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters and in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So this is talking about seafood, right? What's in the waters. So if it got fins and scales, hey, we can grub all day. But if it ain't got fins and scales, at that point, it, it becomes a, a like shrimp. That's a roach of the sea. You throw a dead body in the water, they to be the first ones on it. Lobsters is coming next. They go and shift. Then after that, the crabs. Then after that, you know what I'm saying? All the other bottom feeders. Crawfish, right? But that's the spiders, crabs, roly polies of the sea. Also, catfish. Catfish, you could throw a dead rat in the water and the catfish gonna eat it up. They don't have scales. Right, so if it has scales and fins, that's clean for us to eat. That's wisdom and knowledge in the sight of the Most High God that He gave to our people, so we won't have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, right? Gout. Diabetes, gout, right? Heart disease. I always tell people if you want to know what sin is, right? Sin is the transgression of the law. That means you stepped outside of the law of God, right? If you ever want to know what sin is, you got to understand that sin is the wages of the wages of sin is death. 
So if you don't know what sin is, ask yourself, is it going to kill me? If I eat too much pork, is it going to kill me? Yes, right? If I if I smoke these cancer sticks, right, these cigarettes, is it going to kill me? Yes. If I'm living a homosexual, uh, homosexual lifestyle, can I possibly catch something that's going to kill me? Yes. So that's how you know what sin is. Because, look, his judgment is a ring. That means what goes around comes around, right? So wages of sin is death. If I keep doing this, it's going to cause me to die. But Acts 17 and 30. Yes, I'm Okay, we're going to read this also about swine. Read. So this is a this is an account where Christ uh, was going around healing people. It's in the New Testament, right? This is the book of Matthew, chapter 9 and verse 28. Get out. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by the way. Right, so he's walking up on an encounter, and, and, and what he's seeing, right, is what he's describing. Keep reading. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Right, because Jesus was on, so-called Jesus was on the earth, right, walking around, and they knew that who he was. And so they was kind of scared, like, hold up, our time is not up yet. We're still supposed to be causing sin on the earth. We're still supposed to be destroying, causing people to err. Why are you here? Are you coming to torment us? Right, because Jesus is looking at these demons face to face. Right, read. And there was a good way off from them and heard of swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. Right? And so you might have been thinking, I know that these demons ain't commanding Christ to, to do something. They say, put me in swine and I'm going to do it. No. Christ is saying, well, hey, guess what? I agree with you. I'm going to send you in that swine because it's a filthy animal and you're a filthy demon. Right. And so when he went into them, them when, when all those um, when all those uh, wicked spirits went into the pigs, they ran off the cliff and died. You know why? Because those wicked spirits provoke you to sin and the wages of sin is death. So when you're in an animal and, and you that same wicked spirit, you're going to cause that animal to jump off a cliff. You're going to cause that animal to commit death. Right. So I know you guys probably just came out of sharks. Right. What, what's some of the food that y'all might have bought? Some wings. All praises, oh, all praises. Man. You ain't got no shrimp, crab, lobster, right? I got some, some of my baby wants to eat. Hey. I don't eat pork. Come on, all right, all right, all right. Yo, you know, you know, uh, give me that, um, you know what I'm saying? Acts, got Acts 17 30. All right, read this. This is the book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. And the times of this ignorance. Right, you was ignorant. Y'all was ignorant before y'all bought that. Y'all didn't know about the laws like that. Right, you didn't know that God... Huh? No, I'm talking about the other stuff, the seafood. Oh. I'm talking about the seafood. Your chicken, fine. Oh, my uh, seafood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the seafood that y'all bought. Right. At, at, you is ignorant, you know. Then I'm not saying ignorant as you is. is, is we all was ignorant at one point. Right? So read. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. So when God said he loved you so much, you're his child. You didn't know that. And I knew that you wasn't going to know that because he's the creator of all. So he made us blind to certain things. He wakes us up. He puts us to sleep. He causes to die. He makes alive, right? So he's saying, because I know all these things and you was ignorant, you didn't know, guess what? I'm going to wink at it right now. But, but what does he call us to do? Read. But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. So that's our whole mission out here, right? Is to repent and to keep the commandments. Read this book knowing that it's about our people, right? It's not a so-called white man's book. It's not a, a book of slavery. This book right here makes us alive. Right? This book feeds us spiritually. It's not enough to just go to church. It's not enough to just listen to what I say or what a pastor say. You got to read for yourself. And now you know that your nationality is what? Tribe of Judah, but we're all Israelites. The children of Israel. Children of Israel. Right? We're the real Jews according to the Bible. Right? Give me uh, Revelation 2 and 9. Revelation 2 and 9. All right? Two more. Two more. Right? Two more. Revelation 2 and 9. Give me your precept. Hebrews 11 and verse 26. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for our sins. 
right? So we all know that he died on the cross for our, our sins, right? To bring repentance unto Israel, right? But that's null and void if you hear the truth and you say, guess what? I'm going to do what I want to do. When you, when you believe that you have free will, that's when, hey, that sacrifice go out the window. Because he said, you're supposed to be a slave to righteousness. I put chains on you. I put a yoke on your neck. That's why I say don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers, right? Read this. This is the last one I'm going to read. And you, you know, you guys can go. I don't, I, I would recommend you guys don't feed that, that seafood to them children, you know? Oh, all right. Just the chicken. Just the chicken. No all shrimp, praises. Right? Just the chicken. No shrimp, right? Being honest. Just, just no the shrimp. chicken. No shrimp, right? All right. Chicken. All right. Read this, all right? This is powerful right here. This, <laughs> this is about our people. No pig, no swine, right? Read. This is the book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation. He knows that we work in nine to fives. He knows that we in the factories. He knows that we doing the delivery jobs. He knows that we're the doing all the slum in America. He knew that we built this stuff, this place up. We was in the field working, right? He know our works. He know that we're trying to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. He know that we seeking him, right? He said, I know thy works, read. And tribulation and poverty. I know y'all's tribulation. All the, all the hate crimes, the racism, right? How y'all the, 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 the first fired, the last hired. I know, I know y'all's situation, y'all tribulation, right? Read. But thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say. Oh no, he said we're rich. How can we be going through all this poverty, right? We go to China, our people in poverty, and they're kicking us out. We go to we go to uh, Africa, they're they're selling us, right? Our people in poverty over there. That that right. Asia Minor, right? They're kicking us out of there in the Middle East. They don't care about us. We're in poverty everywhere we go. Right? All skin folk ain't kin folk just because they got black skin don't mean they come over to America and they hire me. No. This when I meet Africans in America, guess what? They 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 look like they literally want to spit in my face. Right? Because they're they're not our people, right? But we're the people that's in poverty that's rich, right? Because we're the children of Israel. That's right. Right? According to this Bible, this Bible is written by us and for us. Right? We gotta come back to it. Read. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. That's why I said we're the real Jews according to the Bible because right now we got people in the Middle East claiming to be Jews and they, are, they look nothing like the people that we're reading about in the Bible. That's right? right. That's blasphemous. Right? Read. And are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. They're the synagogue of who? The synagogue of Satan. They're the synagogue of who? The, the synagogue, synagogue of Satan. Satan. So we're back to this sign right here. You see how that was full circle? We back to this sign right here. And you said it yourself. That's the devil. That's right. And that's the devil that's lying on us right now saying that they're the Jews and we're not. That's we're the real right. Jews according to the Bible. We are the what? We're the Israelites. I mean I need to just I need to hear it. You're, we're the Israelites. That's right. that's right. Can you can you step on this before you leave? Yeah, step on. Two step, step, step. Two step. step. Two step. Now nah, that's a little love tap. This man put us in oppression, lied to us about who our Christ is. You gotta step on that thing. God, God, all, God. Praises. All, all praises, all praises. We're gonna be out here every Sabbath day, every Saturday. You feel me? Okay. Uh, so you guys come back here to word. Bring people. Tell them who you are. Read your Bible. Read okay. the book. All right. Read this. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter eleven, and verse twenty-six. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. He said before us this day a blessing and a curse, right? Read. A, bl a blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. Right, so he, he set before us a blessing and a curse. So everybody saying that we got free will, guess what? We don't. Romans 9 tells us it's not him that willeth or him that runneth, but the mercy of the Most High God. He set beside, before us a choice. We got a choice to make. Either the blessing or the curse. It's, it, and, and the difference between free will and a choice is that a choice has consequences. Free will has no consequence. We have a consequence for everything we do. Right? All right, bring your precept out Revelation for, for Revelation 2 and 9. Read. This is the book of James, chapter 2 and verse 5. Hearken, my, hearken my beloved brethren, had not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith 
And right, so that tells us right now the richness that it's talking about in Revelation 2 9 is the faith, right? Everybody says, you know, we're the chosen because we went through the most, right? And we still walk around with a smile on our face. We still opening the doors for other people. We still giving to the poor. We still having fun, working out, being creative, being the salt of the earth, playing sports, right? We still raising families. Right? Our people are rich in faith. We got faith and hope that he's going to save us out of this, that he's going to make a way. Right? We might have a zeal that's not according to knowledge. Our people are lost and destroyed. But guess what? We still have faith. We, we still a, a spiritual people. Keep reading. And heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him. Right? The kingdom isn't here right now. So that means we're rich. Right? Not according to right now, but we're rich according to what's going to happen. Right? Read this. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 9. Behold, I will make them a, the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. They're not the Jews. How many times we got to tell y'all people they are not the Jews? We are the real Jews according to the Bible, right? We're the ones that's going to walk into the land, right, with a staff in our hand according to every age. We're the ones that's going to have the fair metries put on our heads, right, so we don't sweat. We're the, we're the ones that's going to be eating healthy. We're the ones... Right? That's meant to have these cheat codes, this wisdom and knowledge. Right? The wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of our times. Keep reading. But do lie. Behold, I will make them to come down and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Come. He's going to, he's going to reward us for all the deeds that we do. All the deeds that we do, he's going to reward us. So like you. Where's uh, my Bible at? water all right somebody give me isaiah chapter 30 and 1 and then somebody go to jeremiah 13 verse 12. I got isaiah 30 and 1. Yeah, jeremiah you give me uh isaiah 14 and 3 no 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 you you give me uh you give me jeremiah 13 and 20 right you start at 12 and you give me isaiah 30 and 1 right All right, read me Isaiah 30 and 1, all right? This is a letter to the rebellious. Who are the rebellious? The children of Israel, the so-called black man, the so-called African-American, the so-called Hispanic, the so-called Native American, the so-called slaves and people in poverty of Negro descent, right? Read this. You got a few minutes to hear the words, brother? The words of the Most High God? All right, all praises. Honor thy mother and thy father. All right, read this. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, and verse 1. Whoa. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. Right, we go everywhere, but we don't go to the Most High God. We go to college, and, and, and we're so happy that we get to walk the stage at college. And if we can't, right, we have earthly sorrow, right? The brother spoke about that earlier. We have earthly sorrow, we can't walk that stage, right? But he says... Everybody, all my children, they take counsel, but not of me. This is the most high God speaking, right? You got a minute to hear the words of the Lord, brother? All right. All right. Make sure, hey, the most high, he might not care about your hurry, you know. You might not have tomorrow. This might be something that you might learn, and, and, and it might change your life. Not this time? All right. You don't got me, you got the most high. God, right? And, uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know what I'm saying? The most high God's going to have to mock some people in their day of calamity, right? And say, not this time. You get to the pearly gates, he might say, not this time, right? Read. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 13 and verse 10. This evil people which refuse to hear my words which walk in the imagination of their heart. Right. So he said, not this time. Precept. He said, not this time. And we all know that he's going to mock those in the day of their calamity, right? So it would be a shame for you to go to the gates on judgment day and you, you, you're you begging to get into the kingdom and he say, I'm in a hurry. Uh, I can't speak to you right now, right? It would be a shame for him to say, hey, not this time. Move to the left, right? It would be a shame for him to say that. And you would you would feel like uh, 
You know what I'm saying? That's not you. Would, you would feel like is there righteousness with God? Is there unrighteousness with God? That's what you would feel like. But you just said that to his prophets, right? They mocked the prophets, like Second Corinthians twenty six and sixteen says. They mocked the prophets, right? I got, you next time. I got you next time. No, you don't got me, right? I'm out here giving the word, brother. We out here right now. I'm looking at you face to face, right? We should never be in a hurry, right? To where we can't um, pick up the phone. Sister earlier today said, "I'm on the phone, right?" There's a song. Uh, there's a there's a there's a uh, a song I heard that said, "Answering his call, deny my cell phone." Hey, look, an earthy cell phone conversation should not stop you from hearing the words of the Lord. Whenever you hear the words of the Lord, you should be able to you should be ready to pull it pull aside, whether you're driving or walking. Right. And you should be able to stand for at least five minutes and hear the words of the most high God. Right. Keep reading. Oh, you got a precept? Read. This is the book of Sirach, chapter five and verse seven. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. How's it going? Read that from the top. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 5, verse 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. So you can't tell somebody that you're in a rush. You can't tell the Lord that you're in a rush. I'm in a hurry right now. I can't speak. Right? Make no tarry means don't play around. Right? Stop putting him second. Read. And neither, Salakia, and put not off from day to day. Don't put him off and say, I'll do it the next time. I'll do it tomorrow. Right? We don't know what tomorrow may bring. That's what they say, right? So he's saying, don't tarry. Don't count on tomorrow. Don't boast yourself in tomorrow. We don't know that what evil might come. Car accidents happen. Food poisoning happens. COVID-19 happens. You feel me? Anything can happen from here to tomorrow. And you cannot tell the Most High God that you did not have an opportunity to hear the truth because it was brought to you face to face. Keep reading. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Right, so in the day of vengeance, guess what? That wrath is gonna be kindled. He's gonna remember that you said, I'm in a rush. Not this time, next time, I got you. He gonna remember you said that, right? Bring your precept out. This is the book of Proverbs chapter one and verse 24. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but ye have set and not at all my counsel and would not none have my reproof right and so what the most high god is saying because i've called you and and none have answered because i reached out my hand and you didn't grab it guess what my wrath is kindled and people might sit around and say guess what you never gave me a dream i never had a prophecy i never saw a vision the most high god right is not a mystical creation he's real life he lives he's real He's sending his right hand through his people, through his prophets. We are that right hand, and he's, he's going to tell you on the day of judgment, guess what? I reached out my hand to you, and you can't say what? That he never did, right? Read. Verse 26. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh, right? So because you did all that, guess what? I'm going to get you back. Because you didn't want to listen, because you mocked, because you scoffed. Because you didn't, you didn't, you weren't prudent because you didn't take me serious or my prophets, right? Who speak out of the oracles of God because you didn't do that. Guess what? I'm going to mock you in your calamity. Hey, read that uh, other one from the top. You lost? All right. It's cool. You dropped it. You got a piece of it? Read. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Thus saith the Lord, after this manner will I mar the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. This evil people which refuse to hear my words. Right, so the marring is the destroying of. He's going to destroy us because we refuse to hear his words. We got something better to do. We got to eat something. We, we got to talk on a phone call, right? We, we got we to gotta watch a, a basketball game. We got to play a video game. We got to go pregame, right? Read. Which walk in the imagination of their heart and walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. Right, they walk after the imagination of their own heart, right? You can tell them what the Bible says and they'll tell you, well, in my heart I feel like. Ain't nobody asking what's in your heart. 
I don't care what's in your heart. I care about what's in this book. God. That doesn't make any sense. You talking about what's in your heart. I don't, I don't know you. Right? How can I trust you? How can you trust your own heart? It says the heart is deceitful among all who can know it. You don't even know your own heart. That's why sometimes you feel like you, you have a crush on somebody, right? And, and guess what? Then the next day you don't like that person no more. You don't know your own heart. Your heart was leading you to have sex with this one woman, right? But as soon as you have sex, guess what happens? You hate her. You don't like her no more. You on to the next. You can't trust your own heart. Read your precept. No, you already said it. Oh, all right. Jeremiah 17, 9. All right. But uh, let's go back to the top. Jeremiah, uh, what I say? Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30 and 1, right? Read. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord. Woe to the rebellious children. That's talking to us. That's talking to the stiff neck, hard, hard headed people who, who, who understand we're kings and queens, but we want to use it for the left hand side. That's talking to us. Read. That take counsel, but not of me. That take counsel, right? We go to counselors, right? Uh, for everything. We have marriage problems. We go to a, 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 a counselor that went to school to help us in our marriage. Our kids having problems in school, they go to the counselor, right? We go to all these earthly counselors, but not the most high God. We don't see what the Bible has to say about the situation. Bring it out. Right? We, we lean on everybody else's understanding and our own understanding, except for the wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations, which is these laws, statutes, and commandments. Read. And that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they might select it. That right? We cover with a covering, but not of the spirit. We put on our suits and our ties. We put on our, 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 our luxury cars. We put on our uh, designer clothes. Right? We put on everything in the world. We put on our theologian hats, our cap and our gowns walking across the stage. We put on everything except for him. We don't put on the spirit. We don't put on the law, statutes, and commandments, the knowledge. We don't put on righteousness. We don't put on the armor of God. It talks about Ephesians 6, chapter 11 on down. We don't have the shods. We don't have the shoes of peace. We all have evil eyes towards our brothers. We all want to act up and gangbang. We all want to do all these things that's wicked, right? And take no counsel of the Most High God. This is why he calls us rebellious children. This is why he got to kick us out of his house. Read. Bring it out. That they may add sin to sin. Right? So we add sin to sin because we are putting ourselves in this predicament because instead of going to somebody with wisdom, we want to go to our friends that have it. That would be like me asking uh, my friend, I want to get married. Say I want to get married. My dad is married. Right? My friends, they're not married. They're single. I'm asking them for advice when I could be asking my dad. So therefore, I'm adding sin to sin. I might break up with the girl based off the advice of my friends. Right? So we add sin to sin because we don't ask the right people. What you got? Bring it out. Uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 13, 12. You got a precept? All right, read this precept. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 5. Bring it out. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Right? We got to depart from evil. Our own understanding is evil. Right? Our own understanding will lead us to believe that we can eat what we want to eat. That we can sleep with who we want to sleep with. Right? Our own understanding will have us to die. So that's why he says it's evil. That's why he says to not lean on your own understanding. To, to trust him in everything we do. Right? That's why he's telling us these things. Because a man's, a man's heart, the ways of a man might devise in his way. I might wake up and plan to do X, Y, and Z um, during my day, but it says that the Lord directed my footsteps. So even though I'm making plans, even though I'm lining stuff up, even though I'm prior preparation prevents uh, piss poor performance, even I'm doing all, all those things, guess what? The ways of man are of the Lord. Man's goings are of the Lord, right? Whatever happens, that's ordained by the Most High God. Read what you got in uh, Jeremiah 13 and 12, right? Read. 12, I'm, I'm going to say, say 12, uh, I, I'm going to tell you, you know what I'm saying, I'm going through that, uh, yeah, right, I'm just, these are just general locations, right, and we're going to talk about it, right, we're going we gonna to build this thing down slow, read, this is the book of Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse 12, therefore thou shalt speak unto them this word, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, right, God is saying, speaking to the children of Israel, right, at this point, he's a, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a father, right, who's not very happy with his children, you ladies got a minute to hear the words of the Most High God? To learn something out of the Bible that you might not have ever heard of? 
You, sister with the natural hair. We got wine. <laughs> we got some spiritual wine that tastes so sweet. That's right. All right, read what you got. Every bottle shall be filled with wine, and they shall say unto them, do we not certainly know that every bottle should be filled with wine? Right, so hey, you know when, when, when you get in trouble and you come home and you expect it to get punished, but you kind of confused because your parents kind of seem happy. So you kind of like, oh, what's going on here? The most high God said, hey, tell the children of Israel to everybody get, get a bottle and I'm gonna fill it up with some wine. And the children is like, do we not, do we not know that all these bottles is filled with wine? Hey look, we are, we are ahead of the game. We already had them filled up. Right? They thinking they finna party maybe. They thinking that they're finna get rewarded for something they didn't know that they did. Right? As rebellious children do. But guess what the Most High God say? Read. Then shall thou say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will fill all the inhabitants of this land, even the kings that sit upon David's throne, and the priests, and the prophets, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with drunkenness. Right, so he's telling us, historically he's telling us Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. He's telling the kings, the priests, the warrior class, I'm filling them with drunkenness. I'm making them to err. I'm making them to stumble. I'm making them to forget who they are, right? Because they wanna be rebellious children, right? I'm making them drunk. They think it's a good thing that they're getting wine, but they don't know that too much of a good thing, right, will lead to destruction. Too much sugar in a fruit will spoil it rotten. He's saying, I'm going to spoil them right into where the point where they don't know who they are, where they're destroyed. Oh. Right? Give me uh, verse 20. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 13, and verse 20. Lift up your eyes, and behold them that come from the north. Where is the flock that was given thee, thy beautiful flock? Right? This is talking about 70 AD. This is talking about the fall of Jerusalem. This is talking about what's prophesied because we didn't want to listen to our father. Right? He says, spare the rod, spoil the child. So guess what? He's not sparing the rod. He's going to give us the rod. He's going to give us that belt. Right? Read. Verse 20. What wilt thou say when he shall punish thee? For thou hast taught them to be captains and as chief over thee. Right? So right here he's telling us what? I'm sending a, a nation from the north to come and take over y'all. And you might say, how is this happening? Why are, they, why are our friends turning on us? Because guess what? We didn't go to counsel to him. We went to counsel to them. We took on their gods. We was rebellious children. So guess what? He made us drunk. And now he's calling them to take over us. Because he's making us to forget ourselves. And he said, you might say, how is this happening? And the Most High God is mocking them and saying, didn't you teach them how to be priests? Didn't you teach them how to be kings? Didn't you teach them how to rule the earth? But guess what? Now they're going to rule over you. Because you gave all the wisdom and understanding to them and you didn't adhere to it. Right? Keep reading. Oh. Shall not sorrows take thee as a woman in travail? Right? Guess what? As a woman in travail, as a woman in labor, you finna go through all these sorrows. Right? Because we were rebellious people, we're going through sorrows. Alright? You're going through all these sorrows as a woman in travail, right? Do it. You can read it. Right? Read. You got it? All right, read. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear. Oh, no, 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 no. It's like it. It's like it. That's my clothes. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, give me, um, give me, um, Salakia. Give me, ex you know, give me Deuteronomy 28, 68, right? You give me Deuteronomy 28, 68. You give me uh, Exodus 21, 16. Right? You give me, um, you give me Judith 5 and 11. You got, you got yours? All right, read. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. We always tell people, you know, the Lord is bringing you into Egypt again. What does that mean? It means bondage, slavery. When we was in Egypt the first time, Moses said, let my people go. We was building pyramids. We was, you know what I'm saying, brick and mortar, right? We was at the dust. We was the ones in Section 8 housing in our own little Jerusalem, uh, uh, Israelite camps back then, yeah. right? In the ghettos, literally, right? Keep reading. With ships, by the way we're up, he put us in ships. 
Like, I, like we read before, he's making us drunk with wine. He's going to make some people come from a north country to take over us, right? Now he's scattering us. Think about it. Think about it. If, you, if, if, if your kid is acting up today in 2021, right? Maybe 2020, 2018 more so. But if your kid was acting up in 2018 to 2020, guess what, guess what your parents might have did? They might have signed you up for Beyond Scared Straight. Got you picked up on a bus and sent to prison for you to experience hardships. The Most High God said he's sending us back in slavery on ships, right? He sent us beyond scared straight. He had to beyond scared us straight back to him, right? Because we didn't want to listen to his words. So what he had to do, he had to pal us on a slave ship, right? I'm going to get all my kids, put them on this prison bus, and I'm going to send them into slavery. Everybody want to say, that's not my God, the God, I don't believe in the Bible. What kind of God puts his, puts, uh, condones slavery? What kind? He don't condone slavery, but he had to do it to scare us straight, beyond scared straight, right? Read. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. He said, hey, look, hey, nobody going to get you out of this except for me. You hear me? When you in Beyond Scared Straight, you in there until your parents come get you out. You might have a, a come to Jesus moment and have a session with your parents. It's up to your parents to say, okay, he had enough, right? Nobody can save you, right? You might be crying, right? He don't care about your sorrow. He don't care about none of that because we had to come back to him. If you're not coming back to him, he don't care about what you're going through, right? Give me what you got. It's the book of Judah, chapter 5 and verse 11. Therefore, the king of Egypt rose up against them. Right. This is this is a precept to what happened when we was in Egypt. Right. You ask you ask our people what, what what did our people go through in Egypt? They don't know. They don't know about Moses. They don't know about Pharaoh. They don't know how all the plagues that happened. They don't know about you know what I'm saying all the hard work we was doing in Egypt and how it happened. Right. They don't watch the Bible story videos. They didn't read the book in Sunday school. Right. They don't know. Right? So this right here is, is telling you what happened in Egypt. This is a recap. Read. Therefore the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtly with them, and brought them low, which laboring in brick, and made them slaves. Then they cried, verse 12, then they cried unto their God, and he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plagues. So guess what? He, he brought us low, and that's the only way we called on our God. If we was up high, we wouldn't have called on him. He brought us low, and that's what, that way we called on our Most High God, and the Most High God started shaking stuff up, and he had to do something about it. Keep reading. So the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. Verse 13. And God dried the Red Sea for, before them. Verse 14. And brought them to Mount Sinai and Sadie's barn, and cast forth all that dwelt in this wilderness. Right, so he had to bring us to the wilderness. He had to give us manna, but only after we had our come to God moment. Right? We, he had to beyond scare us straight. And only then was he able to come back to us or we were able to come back home. Right? When he, he had us in uh, behind the little jail cell glass and he was looking at us and he said, Okay, are you gonna you gonna keep my commandments? Are you gonna keep my law, statutes, and commandments this time? And we said yes. He said, Okay, I'm about to bring you out of Egypt with a strong hand. Right? So I'm here today to tell you that we're still in Egypt. What did I say get for you? No, Exodus, uh, Exodus 21 and 16. Exodus 21 and 16. And after that, uh, give me Exodus 1. You got it? Read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 16. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Right? So we already know that there's a punishment coming to the people that stole us, but that does not negate the fact that we were stolen. Right? And it was allowed by the Most High God for us to be stolen. And we are still stolen and we are still in the land of our captivity. We are still, right, in the working class field. We're still in the field, right? We're, we're still bond men and bond women because we still got to pay taxes. We got to pay bills on property, right? The earth was made for our sake, so while I got to pay for the ground I walk on. We got to pay for rainwater, right? We are still in the land of our captivity. Let's look at some of the things that happened in Egypt and let's, and let's compare them to what we're going through now. Read Exodus 1. Um, where is it at? Um, Salakia. Uh, Alright. Uh, 
Salakia, bear with me. All right, we're going to start at verse 10. Exodus uh, chapter 1, verse 10. Right? Read. We're going to compare old Egypt to the new Egypt. Right? Read. This is Exodus, Salakia. This is the book of Exodus chapter 1 and verse 10. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when their, Salakia, when there followed out any war, they joined also unto our enemies and fight against us. Right? So he's saying, guess what? Let's, let's come on and devise a plan before they multiply against us. What is that? Planned Parenthood. Abortion. Right? What is, what is all these things, right? They, they invented these condoms, right? Our people, are the, our people buy the most condoms I've led to, be, led to believe on the face of the earth, right? We don't want kids. They make us homosexuals to where we don't want to reproduce no more. Let us, let, us, let us make up something to where they'll fall into it and they'll stop multiplying. So they use sorcery. They use the media. They use commercials. They use uh, talk shows, right? People of power to influence us, right? Read. I, I just want to say, they say that the most dangerous place for a baby in America is the womb. Right? The most dangerous place for a black baby is the womb. Before they even come out the womb, they got targets on their back. They got targets on them as soon as they in the womb. Right? Let us deal wisely with these people before they multiply and take us over. Right? They know that we're more powerful than them. Our oppressors know that. Right? Read. So this is the old Egypt, and I'm comparing it to the new Egypt. The same thing that happened back then is happening. Nothing new under the sun. Read. Verse 11. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. Right? So now we got CEOs. We got, uh, we got supervisors. We got... Uh, so like it, we got foremans, general foremans, we got managers, right? We got all stewards, right? We got all these people over us, taskmasters, taskmasters, right? We also got what? The sports, uh, the sports uh, world where they, they're controlling us in um, uh, general managers, right? We got uh, influence from ESPN, influence from CNN. We got influence from um, um, the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We got influence from um, these uh, false pastors in these churches, right? T.D. Jakes, T.D. Snakes, right? Uh, Creative Flow of Dollar, right? Uh, Stephen Furtick, Mike Todd, Joel Osteen. We getting all these taskmasters to keep us off track, right? To make us feel like we're doing okay in life and we're gonna make it to heaven and we can keep sinning, right? We'll, we'll give them taskmasters, right? Same thing happening back there, it's happening right now. Keep reading. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, fit them, and Ramesses. Right? So now we are building up, we're building up America in the sports, right? We're giving entertainment to America. We're giving, we're giving, we're building up buildings for America. We're building up, uh, we're giving good ideas to, for medicine for America, right? The taskmasters have got us in line and we think that we're free. So guess what? When we think we're free, we're going to contribute to the place that oppressed us, right? The same thing happened back then. It's happening right now. Keep reading. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. The more that they afflict us, the more that we multiply and grew. Right? The Mexicans, right? So-called Mexicans, they still they multiply like rabbits. Right? The black people, we still multiply like rabbits. Right? We might be leaving our, our homes like the fathers and you know what I'm saying the moms and everybody. But guess what? That's not everything that they're trying to create to stop us from multiplying is not working. Right? Read. And they were grieved with, because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard like it, with hard bondage in mortar and in brick. And right? So this is describing what we was doing in Egypt. They made our lives hard by giving us jobs to do every single day. We couldn't chill. We couldn't relax no matter how old or, or young we were. Right? It used a word called rigor, but really that just means... You know what I'm saying? Something very, very bad. Something very, very treacherous. They was doing horrendous things to us. Just like they was doing here in America when we first got here. Don't think that the Bible is sweet just because it uses vocabulary words like rigor, right? They was doing harsh things to us, right? Read. And in all manner of service in the field, all their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. With rigor again, right? And that word is not 
a, a word to take lightly. It's, a, it's not exactly, right? So uh, give me, um, what did I say before? Isaiah 14, 3, right? Salakia. You got Isaiah 14 and 3. Somebody give me uh, Jeremiah 30 and 8. Uh, 14 and 3. You got uh, 38. All right. Read. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. And right? So he's going to give us rest eventually from our sorrow when he scares us straight. Like beyond scared straight, right? Keep reading. And from the fear, and from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve, right? That's that rigor, that hard bondage, right? That we're being made to serve. We're being made to serve in hard bondage, right? We're being made to serve whether we want we if we want that four hundred one k and we want that retirement, we have to work, right? If we want to feed our family, we have to work. That's called slavery, right? That's called oppression. That's called captivity. Right, so that's why he said I'm sending you back to Egypt again. This is why we always show people the back of a one dollar bill has that Egyptian pyramid and an Egyptian eagle, right? Letting you know that you're back in bondage again. You're back in slavery. The children of Israel built up Egypt. The children of Israel built up Greece. The children of Israel built up Rome. And the children of Israel have built up America. We're here today. That is right. And the same stuff that happened back then is happening right now. That hard bondage. You might think you're free in the land of the free, but try to leave America without a passport and I swear you're getting locked up. That's you right. can't get out of here. Bring that up. You're in bondage, right? Keep reading. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse four, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased, right? It's going to be such a beautiful sight. We're going to be like, how, how are we able to rise above these people? They have oppressed us so long. How has the king ceased? How has all these people just left us alone? Right? Moses in the book of Exodus said, Lord, how is this going to come to pass? And the Most High God said, just as hard as Pharaoh is, I'm going to bring you out with an even harder hand. He's going to let you go with a mighty salvation. Because I say it, thus saith the Lord. Right? He got the power to move mountains. This, who's the mountains? The mountains are the people that oppress you. We're in the valley right now, but we got the power to come back to the top. He said, run to, run to the hills, which come your help. Right? Read. Verse 5. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindering. Right? So if you ever watch a movie and somebody's getting beat with a stick and, 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 and that man get beat with a stick and a stick break in half, guess what? A lot of times in that movie, that person looked like, oh, you done messed up now. You ain't got no weapon, right? So guess what? He's saying, I broke the scepter. I broke the staff that was beating them in the back. I broke all those things and I'm causing my people to rise back to the top, right? Read what you got. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck. Right? So he's breaking that yoke off our neck, that bondage, that oppression. The, you got to wake up at this time. You can't leave work right now. You can't get this day off. Right? He's breaking off that bondage. Read. And will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve, it's like it, strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Right? So he's going to make sure that nobody is eating off of our backs, right? The buildings that we buy from now on, guess what? They're gonna be our buildings. The food that we make from our farms is gonna be our food. That's right. Right? He's making sure that nobody's going to eat off of what we make, right? Because from, from for about 400 years here in America, everything that we do goes to them. It doesn't come back to us, right? Even if we wanna be our own businessman, we gotta get permission, right, by getting the LLC. We gotta get permission by by paying taxes, right? So we're not free here in America. We, we gotta keep these law, statutes, and commandments, come back to the most high God, that's the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? And keep these law, statutes, and commandments because that's our wisdom and that's our knowledge. And with that, I'm gonna pass it off to the next mighty speaker. But before I say that, I wanna say peace be unto all the people, right? Shalom. 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 Come, Yashalom. 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 Come, Yashalom.